Hi, this is Troy DeWard, and I'm a little perplexed to be here giving a commentary for this dirty little film I made a half century ago, especially as I haven't seen the damn thing in years. But yeah, let's uh, let's see what we can piece together. My memory's a little shot these days, but anyway, for what it's worth, these are my thoughts as an old man looking back on something long since gone. So, here he is, restored from decades left in a film canister under my bed. I first came across Wade when I was putting up a Christmas window display one evening in the early 70s at some old department store uptown. He stopped by to admire my baubles. I caught his eye, and then, you know, hookups were a breeze back then, but Wade was so much more than that. He wasn't any old trick. He found his way into me. And then it made sense to continue what we had together in front of the camera. I got to use a lot of materials and stuff from those department store displays to make my little private worlds. I had this railroad apartment in the Lower East Side that with enough window dressing, dry ice, and the odd paper mache tree could double as a horny world for Wade to exist in. I was normally filming tricks I picked up from the St. Mark's baths, but nothing really worked out with those guys. Wade was different. He was a writer, and he had that ability to summon something within himself that came alive on screen. He knew how to invite the camera into his world. He knew how to make any viewer feel they were alone with him. And the more I filmed him, the closer I felt to his screen image than the real person I ended up living with. There was no narrative or structure in these reels, just scenarios I had in my head when I was feeling bored or horny. Initially, these were private reels, just for me to get off on. Besides, the stuff was illegal. Unless you disguised it as something along the lines of fitness, action, or adventure. But within those constraints, you could get away with a certain amount of what you'd politely call activity and find yourself an audience. We always had to pretend that what we did was somehow not illicit, and even though everyone knew otherwise, we couldn't do what we really wanted to do because of the fear of prosecution. But we pushed it as far as we could. The law made us use our imagination. But beyond that, other stuff always got in the way. We had some guy ready to hide in that tree. When we got into an argument with Wade about Nixon, which kind of ended in tears, Wade claimed that he didn't blow Republicans. And then we had to start all over again. I didn't have much time to find someone else with the rental costs. But there was this stud I once bought from the Continental Bass who was willing to do it. Turned out he was another Republican voter. But when he saw how hot Wade was, he pretended to be a Democrat. The only problem was he caught the clap, and there was no time to find another replacement. So what you see in the end is a prosthetic I got from a joke shop. Not the most convincing cock in the world, but it probably saved Wade from catching the clap and me from needing a public attorney for obscenity. The whole thing didn't turn out as planned, and Wade hated sour cream, as you can probably tell from that shot. Circulate duplicates of these little adventures at 12 bucks a pop on 8 millimeter, 20 bucks on 16. And we both got off on the idea of arousing complete strangers with these real. Only we didn't consider much beyond that. So it's kind of strange to have this on Earth and be doing the commentary for 50 years later. And even stranger knowing that I wouldn't recognize Wade if he walked past me in the street now. If he was still around, I sure hope he'd give his blessing. Only we lost contact decades ago.
I thought with all the social media out there I'd find him, but nothing. He might not even be alive anymore. We didn't part on the best of terms, but kept it amicable enough for cards each Christmas until it was clear that even that ritual of civility was perfect. I'll say this now. All that excitement's gone. Now I'm just reminded of something that went so wrong after a blissful year living together. I'm reminded of how cold it became during the final month. First, we stopped sleeping together. I said it was my snoring. So I took to the couch. We still bowled each other pretty regularly, so I thought. What I failed to realize at the time was how his eyes stopped lighting up when we spoke. How his interests and social priorities changed, and how vacant and unresponsive he was when I was bawling. He stopped communicating with his voice, his eyes, and even his body. Sometimes it felt as if I was not enough to him. All the joy and affection began to him. He stopped initiating anything. And if I didn't make a move, then nothing would happen. I once tested him by waiting to see if he'd need me. And he went on for months. That's how I found the passion I needed for some torture. Thank you.